he had attained the heavenly planets of, of, of Indra at the end of his life. Once, in an assembly of the demigods, with Brahma present, Mahavisha saw the divinely beautiful Ganga, personification of the river Ganges. As he looked at her, a gust of wind suddenly blew away her garments, and all the rest of the demigods looked away. But not Mahavisha. <laughs> He continued to gaze at her, and he was captivated by her, her beauty. Brahma became very angry because this is very rude, and he cursed him. He said, you, you will be born again upon the earth, but on the other side you will return here after one life, but I hope you've learned your lesson. Mahavisha thought for a moment. And he remembered all the various monarchs upon the earth. And among them all, he considered a king named Pratipa <clears throat> to be the most pious. Therefore, he asked Brahma, may I become the son of Pratipa? And Brahma agreed. Ganga, having seen Mahavisha's unashamed attraction for her, left the assembly, but she was thinking of him. And as she went away, she came across eight demigods known as the eight Vasus. They looked totally bummed, totally dejected. They were like frowning and really bummed out. She asked, why were you despondent? Why are you sad? And they looked at her and said, we have been cursed by the powerful Sri Vasista, and therefore we soon have to take birth as men upon the earth. What a horrible thing. We are very sorry. We are very sorry for the whole thing. We tried to apologize, but it did no good. Ganga heard how the eight Vasus had tried to take Nandini, Vasisa's cow, from, <laughs> from him. The leader of the eight Vasus, Dayu, Dayu, Dayal, had been implored by his wife, Oh, my dear husband, we cannot live without this cow. This cow is able to give us anything we want. This cow is able to give anyone anything that they, that, they, that they desire. You must, you must, you must get him for me. Well, Dayal had finally, after much argument, assented to his wife's request. And with his brother's assistance, he stole the cow. And when Vasista discovered the theft, oh, he was furious, understanding by his mystic power that it was the Vasus who were responsible. He touched holy water, and as he touched the holy water, he uttered a curse. You eight Vasus will have to take birth in the material world, all of you. Well, the Vasus soon learned of this curse, and they crawled before Rishi Vasista and remorsefully crying and begging to, to please forgive them, and they returned the cow. But Vasista said, my words cannot prove false, so I cannot change it. It must be. Repeatedly, again and again, they requested his mercy. And he finally said, okay, okay, okay. You eight Basus will all be born on the earth, just like I said. But seven of you will return very quickly. Only one 
Only Dial, the chief of the culprits, will have to remain upon the earth for a full lifetime. But he will be virtuous. He will be powerful and learned in the Vedas. However, he will never beget any offspring. Indeed, he must abstain. He must be celibate and abstain from the pleasures of sex life. The Vasus then asked Ganga to go to the earth as a woman, as a favor to them. Please go to the earth, they said, as a woman. We do not wish to enter the womb of any earthly human woman. Will you be our mother? When Ganga asked who they would choose as their father, they replied, there is a king of the name Pratipa, and he will soon have a son whose name is Santanu. And that prince, he is destined to become our father. Now you might remember Mahavisha is going to take birth as Santanu, okay, the son of King um, King uh, uh, Prapita, pra Pratipa, right. Well, Ganga was delighted. Santanu would be an incarnation of Mahavisha. She smiled and she said, Yes, I will become your mother. Go where you will and we will soon meet again. And in due course, the Vasus fell from the heavenly planets, and Ganga left for the earth. And soon afterwards, Santanu was wandering along the banks of the Ganges, and from a distance he saw Ganga, and he was struck with her beauty again. He felt his hair stand on end. Her features, they were flawless. And she was, she was adorned with the finest silk robes, just as beautiful as the filaments of lotus flowers. His mouth dropped open. <laughs> he couldn't even take his eyes off of her. Ganga was also attracted to this handsome mother, and she returned his gaze. Her dark eyes met his and sent a thrill through his body. Moving closer to her, Santanu got up his courage and he said, Oh, beautiful one, I don't know if you are a goddess or a Gandharvi or a Dhanava, an Asura or an Apsara. But I beg you to please become my wife. You seem to have no protector. Why not allow me to become your shelter? Ganga glanced downward demurely. O oh, king, I, I will. I will become your wife. And I will obey your commands. But I will make one condition. You must not interfere with anything I do. Even if you do not agree with them. And you must never address me harshly. Or I will leave. So, if you are willing to act in this way, I will remain with you, but if you break this vow, I'm gone. Well, the king hardly even gave it any thought. Of course, 
Fine, no problem. Make it so. He replied at once and brought her back to Hastinapur. And the marriage ceremony was performed that very same day. <laughs> Absorbed in Ganga's celestial beauty of Maya, <laughs> Santanu didn't even notice the passage of time. After a year together, which seemed to him like just a few days, Ganga gave birth to his son. But just after the birth, she left. And Santanu followed her. And she she walked with the with the baby to the banks of the Ganges. And then she took the baby by the leg and threw him in the water. And the baby was swept away by the waters. Santanu was horrified. But then he remembered Ganga's condition. And he kept silent. He didn't want to lose her. Each and every year, for seven years, A boy was born, and each and every year, for seven years, Ganga took the baby to the river and threw him in the river. Somehow or other, the king managed to restrain himself. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine? You're married to a beautiful woman and she takes your baby and throws him in the river? And you can't say anything? My God, what kind of self-control has that got to be? And how, I mean, he's thinking, I don't even know this woman. I mean, how can she do that? She's like, she's acting like a monster. How can a woman do that to her child? But when Ganga was about to drown the eighth child, he stopped, put his hand on his shoulder, put his hand on the baby, and said, do not do this. He could take it no more. And when she started to throw the baby in the water, she shouted, he shouted, stop, stop, you cruel woman. Why are you killing our children? You are the murderer of your own sons, and you are earning great sinful karma by your acts. Ganga stopped. She turned towards Santanu. As you desire a child, I will not kill this one. O king, you may take the child and raise him as your own son. He will without doubt bring glory to your line. But in accordance with our agreement, I am leaving. The king with tears in his eyes took the child. Ganga then revealed his true identity to the mystified king. And she told him about Vasista's curse of the Vasus. She said, I have, in this way, released the various Vasus from the Rishi's curse. But this eighth child, this eighth child is Daya, and he must remain on earth for a full lifetime. Suddenly, the king understood the situation, and he realized that everything had been ordained. Santanu tried to change Ganga's mind, but she was resolute. The king then said, Would you please take the baby? Take her with you to the celestial reasons, to the heavenly planets. And when the child is a young man, he can return to the earth. And Ganga agreed. She held the baby close to her breast and vanished into the river. Santanu 
walking through his tears, returned in sorrow to the capital of Hastinapur. He continued ruling the people. He became famous for his virtue. He was loved by all the citizens, and he ruled the world with justice and compassion. It was said that he was so great that if he simply placed his hand on someone, that person would immediately be relieved of all sickness, material pains, and anxiety. One day, some years after Ganga had left, the king was hunting, as was his habit, near the Ganges. As he pursued a deer along the riverbank, he noticed that this giant river, the huge Ganges, I mean, if you've ever seen the Ganges, it's like miles wide. It's huge. The water, which had previously been deep and flowing, had suddenly become a trickle, <coughs> just a little creek. Marveling at this, the king made his way upriver to find out what happened. And he soon came upon a beautiful, godlike young man who resembled Indra. The amiable looking boy was holding a large bow. It seemed that he had checked the flow of the river by damming it with his arrows. He would shoot one arrow into the back of another arrow, into the back of another arrow, into the back of another arrow, and build a wall in this way all the way up to block the river. The king was absolutely astonished at this unbelievable feat, and he gazed at the youth trying to ascertain his identity. And then suddenly the boy disappeared. And the king, suspecting that it would, might have been his son, turned to the river and said, O oh, Ganga, Ganga, my dear, show me my child. As soon as he spoke, the goddess rose from the waters, holding the boy by his hand. And she approached the king and said, Here, here is the eighth son, whom we conceive together. O oh, great king, take him now. I have reared him carefully, instructed by the rishis like Vasista, Skura, and Parasuram. He has become proficient in all aspects of Vedic knowledge, and he is expert in arms and in warfare. At that point, Ganga vanished, leaving the boy, who is now about 18 years old, with Santanu. The king took him back to the, to the city, where he would later become famous as Bhishma. Does anybody know what Bhishma means? It means one who has made a huge sacrifice, unbelievable sacrifice. Do you know what that sacrifice was? Santanu was kind of a lusty guy. And he went out to the river every day, as was his habit, hunting. <clears throat> and one day, he caught a glimpse of a beautiful woman taking water from the river. And immediately he fell in love. And uh, he wanted to approach her, but she was obviously like a poor uh, woman of another caste or something like that. And he was like shy and didn't know if it would be the right thing to do. So he went back again the next day, 
Then he saw her again. And he went back again the next day. Finally, he got up the courage to talk to her. And uh, I can't remember her name. But it turns out that she was actually the daughter of Yazdeh. And uh, he said to her, he said, I am the king. I am the king of the entire world. Would you consider marrying me and be my queen? She said, no. No, I cannot. He said, why? Why can you not marry the king? She said, because I was told that my lineage would be great kings. And you already have a son. And his children will be your lineage. So I cannot. Santanu didn't want to argue. He realized that it wouldn't be fair to anybody. I mean, Bijma was such a great warrior, such a great king, I mean, a great prince. <coughs> so he came back to Hastinapur, sad, dejected. And this went on for like days. And Bijma was like, what's wrong, father? He didn't say anything. Father, what's wrong? Days and days. He wouldn't say anything. So one day when Santanu decided to finally go out and do his regular deer hunting, Bhishma followed him in secret. And, uh, and he saw the girl, Satyavati, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Her name is Satyavati. And, uh, and he saw in his father's eyes, you know, that this was, the, this was the problem. And so after the king went back to Hastinapur, Bhishma stayed, and he went to the hut of the father of the girl, or the, the guy that was actually, it wasn't the father, but the guy who was taking care of her. And, uh, and he said, you know, I would, I would give you my, I would give you everything in the kingdom if you allow your daughter to marry my father. And the old man said, No, no, can't do it. No, 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 because your offspring is going to be the king's. Whatever offspring she has, there's just going to be some kind of a, you know, menial prince or something like that. If if she marries something, it ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. So Bhishma Bhishma didn't know what to do. Thinking about it, he said, well, I tell you what. If you will allow her to marry my father, I will renounce ever getting married, ever having any offspring, ever having any children, ever. And with that, the heavens opened up, flowers came down from the demigods, everybody, Bijma, Bijma, Bijma. That's how he got his name. <laughs> So, any questions or thoughts? There is a, uh, a version of the Mahabharata, if you guys want to read it, it is by Krishna Dharma Das, and it's available online. And if you want to get a, an idea of the history of your, of your mother country, this would be a good thing to read. So. 
There are many versions of the Mahabharata, just like there are many versions of the Bhagavad Gita. And this, this is a very much a condensation. It's only one book. I mean, the Mahabharata is like that big, you know. But it's only one book, and it's very, 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 very well written. Very nice. You get, you you'd enjoy it. I, I read it like twice to my to my daughter. The whole the whole thing. It's really nice. Are you both?
Johnny's a 